Sai Sippers, prepare for liftoff. We're embarking on a whirlwind scientific odyssey, cramming five mind-bending topics into one epic hour. This isn't your average binge watch. It's a hypersonic journey that will blast you off to Mars, unravel the mysteries of the cosmos, and explore the fascinating, sometimes controversial edges of science. What's it like to live on Mars? Ever dreamt of gazing at Earth from the red dust of another planet? Join us on a virtual mission with the Chepea Mars mission, as we explore the challenges and possibilities of colonizing the red planet. From the harsh Martian environment, to the cutting-edge technology needed to sustain human life, this is your chance to experience the thrill of space exploration firsthand. Lost in the cosmos, venture beyond the familiar planets, where the mysteries of the unknown beckon. We're unraveling the secrets of Eris and Makemake, the enigmatic dwarf planets that lurk at the fringes of our solar system. Discover their unique characteristics, explore theories about their formation, and ponder the vastness and wonder of our cosmic neighborhood. Science can be manipulated, but truth prevails. Delve into the dark chapter of Lysenkoism, a pseudoscientific ideology that threatened the very foundation of scientific progress during the 20th century. Learn how this ideology distorted scientific principles for political gain, and gain the critical thinking skills needed to recognize and counter misinformation in today's world. Friend or foe, the enigma of modern agriculture. Genetically modified crops, GMOs, spark passionate debate on both sides. We'll dissect the truth behind GMOs, exploring their impact on agriculture, food security, and the environment. Dive deep into the scientific research, separate fact from fiction, and form your own informed opinion on this complex and relevant issue. Cloning, a double-edged sword. From Dolly the sheep to potential medical breakthroughs, the technology of cloning raises complex ethical and scientific questions. We'll navigate the controversial landscape of cloning, exploring its potential benefits, such as organ regeneration in medicine, and the ethical concerns surrounding human cloning. This one-hour journey will challenge your perceptions, spark curiosity, and leave you questioning the very nature of science itself. Are you ready to embark on this captivating intellectual adventure? Hit that play button, grab your thinking cap and a sense of wonder, and let the scientific exploration begin. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more SciSips shenanigans. Remember, science is a never-ending quest for knowledge, and this binge watch is just the first step on your exciting journey of discovery. So, let's explore. Imagine trading your daily commute for a simulated Martian dust storm. Forget traffic jams. Your biggest worry might be a malfunctioning oxygen generator. Sound exhilarating? Terrifying? Welcome to Shapea, the mission that's taking a giant leap from sci-fi fantasy to reality. Four brave souls are living the astronaut dream right now, not orbiting Earth but confined within a 3D printed dome on good old terra firma. But don't be fooled, this ain't your average camping trip. This is Mars Dune Alpha, a meticulously crafted simulation of their red planet, pushing the boundaries of human endurance and paving the way for the ultimate adventure, setting foot on Mars. It's a question that has seized the human imagination for centuries. A tantalizing mystery that has beckoned us to the stars. Could we perchance be on the precipice of solving this ancient riddle? In the pursuit of this enigma, NASA has embarked on an ambitious endeavor, the Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog, or CHAPIA. This simulated Mars mission aims to recreate the challenges astronauts might face on the Red Planet, with four brave crew members living in a three-dimensional printed base, a facsimile of a Martian habitat, nestled within the confines of NASA's Johnson Space Center. The mission, slated for a spring 2025 launch, is a rigorous test of human endurance and adaptability. The crew, comprised of non-smokers, proficient English speakers, and STEM masters, will undertake a plethora of tasks designed to mirror the rigors of Martian life. From growing vegetables in an alien environment to simulating Mars walks in a foreign atmosphere, the mission is a testament to human resilience. But this is not merely a test of human fortitude. The Chapia mission carries with it a scientific mandate. It aims to provide invaluable data that will guide future Martian missions. It seeks to understand the effects of prolonged isolation, limited communication, and regimented schedules on the human psyche and physiology. 
This mission is a microcosm of the larger objective of expanding our scientific exploration beyond the confines of Earth. It dovetails with the Artemis campaign, NASA's Lunar Exploration Program, which envisages establishing a base camp on the Moon's surface. The Chapia mission is a testament to our insatiable desire to explore, to understand, to conquer. It is a bold step towards unraveling the enigma of life on Mars. But it is more than that. It is a testament to the indomitable human spirit, a testament to our unquenchable thirst for knowledge, a testament to our unwavering belief in the power of scientific exploration. Here are eight surprising facts about the Chapea mission. Fake food, real science. While the crew enjoys 3D printed pizza and space burritos, these treats are packed with hidden nutrients tailored to their specific needs. It's not just about taste, it's about studying the impact of customized diets on Mars missions. The Mars toilet is no joke. This high-tech marvel recycles waste into water and fertilizer, crucial for long-term sustainability on the Red Planet. But even with futuristic tech, bathroom breaks come with strict time limits and procedures. Virtual reality becomes almost reality. Crew members use VR simulations to explore the simulated Martian landscape, practicing for future exploration missions and scouting potential landing sites without ever leaving the habitat. Time travel without a DeLorean. The habitat operates on a 24.5 hour cycle to mimic the Martian day, meaning they essentially lose 39 minutes every Earth day. This unique schedule affects sleep patterns, meal times, and the entire mission structure. Mind over Mars. The mission includes dedicated mental health professionals who monitor the crew's emotional well-being and develop strategies for coping with isolation, confinement, and the stress of simulated emergencies. Buggy troubles? Not on Mars, yet. The crew uses a custom-built rover called Canopy for simulated Martian excursions. Although it navigates the simulated terrain, it's actually controlled remotely from Earth, testing communication delays and remote operations. Plants versus Martian dust. Chapea features a mini greenhouse where the crew grows various crops under controlled conditions. This experiment not only studies the feasibility of growing food on Mars, but also provides fresh produce and a morale boost for the crew. Global Village Goes Galactic. The mission includes international crew members, fostering collaboration and diverse perspectives in space exploration. It's a small step for the simulated Mars crew, but a giant leap for international cooperation in space travel. Did you know that the Chapia isn't the first mission to simulate life on Mars? Previous endeavors like High Seas, Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, and Mars 500 confined crews for shorter durations, offering valuable insights into crew dynamics, resource management, and psychological challenges. Chai Seas revealed friction within the group, highlighting the importance of team selection and conflict resolution training. Mars 500, the longest isolation study to date, documented bone density loss and sleep disturbances, emphasizing the need for countermeasures during long-term missions. These earlier missions paved the way for Chapia's increased complexity and duration providing crucial data that continues to shape humanity's journey towards the Red Planet. Here's a typical day in the life of a Chapea crew member. 7 a.m., Mars time, sunrise, sort of. Dimmed LEDs simulate the Martian dawn, gently rousing the crew from their custom-designed 3D-printed bunks. After a quick protein-packed breakfast, think space waffles. It's time for morning activities. 8 a.m., the day kicks off with a fitness routine. Not just for personal health. Exercise helps combat bone density loss, a major concern in zero-gravity environments. Imagine pedaling on a stationary bike while wearing a resistance suit, simulating Martian gravity. 9 a.m. Science time. Each crew member has specific research tasks. One might be analyzing plant growth in the mini greenhouse, another conducting psychological experiments studying isolation's impact. Teamwork is key, as crew members rely on each other for data collection and analysis. 11 a.m maintenance break. Keeping Mars Dune Alpha operational is crucial. Tasks might include checking air quality, monitoring resource levels, or fixing minor glitches in the life support system. It's like being your own home repair expert, but with Martian steaks. 1 p.m. Lunch break. Today's menu. Lentil stew with dehydrated vegetables packed with essential nutrients. Meal times are social occasions offering a brief respite from the mission's demands and a chance to bond with fellow crewmates. 2 p.m. The afternoon might involve a simulated spacewalk. Donning a high-tech spacesuit, a crew member ventures into the Mars yard, a specially designed outdoor area mimicking the red planet's terrain. Tasks include collecting rock samples, operating tools, 
and testing procedures for future Martian exploration. 4 p.m. Time for educational enrichment. Crew members have access to a virtual library packed with books, lectures, and even language courses. Learning new skills helps maintain cognitive function and prepare them for the diverse challenges of Mars exploration. 6 p.m. Dinner and decompression. It's a chance to relax, watch movies, play games, or simply chat with crewmates. Social interaction is vital for mental well-being, especially in such close quarters. 8 p.m. Work isn't over yet. Data analysis, report writing, and communication with mission control fill the evening hours. Evenings are often filled with the satisfaction of contributing to groundbreaking research. 10 p.m. Lights out. After a busy day, sleep is essential for physical and mental recovery. But remember, Mars has a longer day so their bedtime might seem early to us Earthlings. This is just a glimpse into a typical day for a Chapia crew member. Every day brings new challenges, discoveries, and the thrill of being pioneers on the path to Mars. Their experiences are more than just a simulation. They're paving the way for humanity's next giant leap. While Chapia's primary goal is to prepare for life on Mars, the mission holds valuable potential for advancements not just for future space colonists, but for humanity right here on Earth. Theses include areas such as telemedicine and remote healthcare, stress management in extreme environments, sustainability and resource management, and of course all the technological innovations. Some technological innovations should include 3D printing. The use of 3D printing for habitat construction could pave the way for on-demand manufacturing and rapid disaster relief solutions. Virtual reality training, VR simulations employed in Chapio, could revolutionize training methods for various professions from surgeons to astronauts. Advanced communication technologies. Overcoming communication delays with Earth could lead to advancements in satellite communication and data transfer on Earth. While the CPA mission holds immense potential for advancements in space exploration, it's not without its own set of potential risks. First, physical health bone density loss. Extended periods in simulated Martian gravity can mimic microgravity's effects, leading to bone loss. Chapia implements countermeasures like exercise routines, but the long-term impact needs further study. Radiation exposure. While Earth-based, the habitat doesn't shield the crew from all cosmic radiation. Long-term exposure might increase cancer risks, requiring mitigation strategies for future space travel. Psychological effects. Isolation, confinement, and the pressure of the mission can lead to stress, anxiety, and even depression. Chapia has mental health professionals monitoring the crew, but the psychological impact of such missions needs ongoing evaluation. Secondly, there are social and ethical considerations, crew selection, and dynamics. Choosing the right individuals for long-term isolation and ensuring good team dynamics are crucial. Improper team selection could lead to conflicts and hinder mission success. Informed consent and potential exploitation. Crew members must fully understand the risks and have complete autonomy to participate. Ethical considerations regarding potential exploitation or pressure to participate are important. Data privacy and ownership. Balancing the need for scientific data collection with individual privacy rights is essential. Clear guidelines and ethical frameworks are needed to ensure data is used responsibly. Thirdly, there are the technical challenges. Habitat malfunctions, technical glitches or equipment failures could jeopardize the mission and crew safety. Robust redundancy measures and contingency plans are necessary. Communication delays. Simulated communication delays with Earth can hinder decision-making and emergency response. Refining communication protocols is crucial for future missions. Cost and resource allocation. Chapia missions represent significant financial investments. Balancing such costs with potential scientific and societal benefits requires careful consideration. It's important to remember that these potential risks are actively studied and mitigated by the Chapia team. Their findings contribute significantly to improving the safety and feasibility of future long-duration space missions, ultimately bringing us closer to the dream of living on Mars. In summary, the Chapia mission is a pioneering endeavor that seeks to simulate the challenges of life on Mars, provide crucial data for future Martian missions, and contribute to our long-term scientific exploration of space. It is a bold testament to our relentless quest for knowledge and our unyielding spirit of exploration. The question of life on Mars remains a tantalizing mystery, but with endeavors like Chapia, we edge ever closer to the answer. Do like this video and subscribe to Psy Sips. 
Buckle up, space explorers, because we're blasting off to the fringes of our solar system on a daring mission to meet two enigmatic dwarf planets, Eris and Makemake. Forget everything you thought you knew about these distant ice worlds, because recent discoveries are rewriting the script. Imagine dwarf planets with hidden oceans, volcanic eruptions spewing icy geysers, and surfaces as colorful as a cosmic fruit salad. Are you ready to ditch Pluto and explore the hottest newcomers in the celestial neighborhood? Then dive in, because this journey promises to be out of this world. Does the mystery of the cosmos not stir your soul, particularly as we ponder the potential of life on other planets? The universe in its vast expanse teems with celestial bodies, each harboring secrets in their icy craters and rocky terrains. Today our focus hones in on two such enigmas, Eris and Makemake, the dwarf planets nestled in the enigmatic Kuiper Belt. Dwarf planets, once considered cold and lifeless, have emerged as subjects of fascinating study. The spectral observations of methane on Eris and Makemake have challenged this perception, revealing an intriguing possibility, that these distant worlds are geologically active. This discovery, sparking a paradigm shift, compels us to reevaluate our understanding of outer worlds. The D to H ratio of methane on these celestial bodies points to intense geological processes beneath their icy surfaces. This finding, while intriguing, is not an isolated revelation. It suggests a larger narrative, one that paints a dynamic picture of the Kuiper Belt, a region once thought to be static and unchanging. The presence of methane on both Eris and Makemake is intriguing, this gas, often associated with life on Earth, hints at the possibility of hidden oceans beneath their icy surfaces. Could these distant worlds harbor unknown forms of life, adapted to the frigid depths? It's a tantalizing question that future exploration might answer. The James Webb Space Telescope, an instrument of unprecedented precision, has offered further insights into these dwarf planets. Spectral data suggests that Eris and Makemake may harbor warm, watery interiors, capable of sustaining oceans of liquid water. The methane on their surfaces, believed to be a product of hydrothermal reactions deep within their cores, hints at geothermal activity. The isotopic ratios of hydrogen and carbon in the methane provide compelling evidence of a geochemical origin. This information, rather than suggesting accretion from the primordial planet-forming disk, points to the possibility of cryovolcanism. Such a process, where water, ammonia, or methane replaces molten rock, could have resulted in the outgassing of methane onto the surface of these planets. The implications of these findings are profound. The presence of subsurface oceans and the potential for geothermal activity open up new avenues for research on planetary habitability. The models developed for these dwarf planets could also apply to Saturn's moon, Titan, and may impact our understanding of its presumed habitability. While colonizing Eris and Makemake might seem like science fiction, it sparks the imagination. The vast distances, extreme temperatures, and lack of resources pose immense challenges. But who knows what technological advancements the future holds? Perhaps one day, humans will set foot on these distant worlds, not as conquerors, but as curious explorers seeking to understand their place in the universe. While both Eris and Makemake are classified as dwarf planets, they pack a punch in the size department. Eris is slightly larger than Pluto, while Makemake comes in third. Think Earth's moon? Tiny in comparison. Eris is about 1,163 times larger, and Makemake a whopping 874 times bigger than the moon. But compared to Earth, they're still pint-sized. Eris is roughly 6.7 times smaller than our planet, and Makemake about 7.4 times smaller. The revelations about Eris and Makemake underscore the significance of further exploration of the Kuiper Belt. This donut-shaped region of our solar system, home to icy worlds like Pluto, is increasingly seen as a dynamic region, teeming with potential for new discoveries. Here are eight intriguing facts about Eris and Makemake. Size surprise. Despite being called dwarf planets, Eris and Makemake are no slouches. Eris is slightly larger than Pluto, while Makemake ranks third among Kuiper Belt objects. Both dwarf planets dwarf Earth's moon, being hundreds of times larger. Icy rainbow. Their cold surfaces aren't just white and boring. Eris boasts a reddish hue due to nitrogen ice, while Makemake shines with a pinkish glow thanks to methane ice, creating a cosmic color palette. Moonstruck Makemake. Unlike Eris, Makemake has a unique companion, a moon named S2015-1364721, nicknamed MK2 for short. This tiny moon is only about 160 kilometers across, yet it orbits Makemake in perfect synchrony, presenting the same face all the time. Hidden oceans, 
Both dwarf planets could harbor internal oceans beneath their icy shells. Evidence comes from the presence of methane, often associated with liquid water on Earth. Could these oceans hold the key to unlocking life beyond our planet? Cryovolcanic whispers. Recent findings using the James Webb Space Telescope suggest potential internal activity on both Eris and Makemake. Could they be spewing icy geysers like cryovolcanoes? This hints at more dynamic and interesting worlds than previously thought. Faster than you think, Makemake takes the prize for the fastest rotation among dwarf planets, spinning on its axis every 22 hours. This rapid spin even gives it a slightly flattened shape at the poles, like a cosmic spinning top. A billion miles apart, despite their close proximity in the Kuiper Belt, Eris and Makemake are actually quite far apart over a billion miles. Traveling between them at the speed of light would take about five hours. Future frontiers. Studying these distant dwarf planets helps us understand the early formation of our solar system and the potential for life in extreme environments. They might be far away, but they hold clues to our cosmic past and future. Before we go, here are some other planets and moons with the potential to support human life. Kepler, 186, F. This Earth-sized exoplanet orbits a red dwarf star in the habitable zone, meaning it could have liquid water on its surface. While the star's radiation might require shielding, the planet's size and potential water make it a prime candidate. Proxima Centauri b. This rocky exoplanet is the closest to Earth at only 4.2 light-years away. It orbits a red dwarf star, but its potential for a habitable zone and Earth-like gravity make it intriguing. Trappist. One system. This system boasts seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a small, cool star. Some planets might be tidally locked, but others could have habitable zones with liquid water. Further study is needed, but the sheer number of potential planets makes it exciting. Europa, Jupiter's moon. This icy moon harbors a vast internal ocean, potentially warmer than Earth's surface. While the surface is frigid, the ocean could support life in hydrothermal vents. Technological advancements might allow us to access this watery world. Enceladus, Saturn's moon. Similar to Europa, Enceladus has a subsurface ocean and spews water vapor geysers into space. The geysers could be sampled for signs of life, and the ocean's potential habitability makes it a target for future exploration. Titan, Saturn's moon. This moon has a thick nitrogen atmosphere and liquid methane lakes on its surface. While not ideal for human life as we know it, Titan's unique environment could harbor exotic life forms adapted to its conditions. It's a valuable laboratory for studying life in extreme environments. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos, Eris and Makemake are but two threads, yet their story has the power to alter our understanding of the universe. As we continue to gaze into the celestial abyss, we are reminded that the universe, in its silent majesty, is constantly whispering its secrets. The question is, are we listening? Thanks for joining us. Do like this video and subscribe to Psy Sips. Imagine a world where wheat remembers the harsh winter and grows stronger. Sounds impossible, right? That's exactly what Soviet scientist Trofim Lysenko claimed, sparking a controversy that chilled science to the core. Today, we dissect the bizarre story of Lysenkoism, a political crusade cloaked in scientific robes, and explore its chilling impact on science and agriculture. Buckle up, this tale twists like a genetically modified plant gone rogue, in the annals of scientific history, few episodes baffle the mind as much as the rise of Lysenkoism, a tale that begins with Trofim Lysenko, an audacious Soviet biologist who daringly dismissed the established principles of genetic inheritance. Instead, he championed his own theory, a theory that was less about empirical evidence and more about alignment with the prevailing socialist ideology. The Soviet Union, in its quest for ideological purity, wholeheartedly endorsed Lysenko's theories, despite their glaring inconsistencies with the scientific consensus. Lysenko's dogma revolved around the concept of vernalization, a process where environmental changes, he believed, could fundamentally alter an organism's genetic makeup. This notion, while fascinating, was fundamentally flawed, as it contradicted the basic principles of genetics, a field of study that was still in its infancy during Lysenko's time. Thus, Lysenkoism, a doctrine shrouded in mystery and intrigue, was born from the peculiar intersection of science and ideology. The stage was set for a saga that would reverberate through decades, leaving a profound impact on science and society alike. While Lysenkoism wasn't a unified theory with set principles, it revolved around several key ideas that differed drastically from established genetics. 
Here are eight of the main principles. Rejection of Mendelian genetics. Lysenko denied the existence of genes and chromosomes, the foundation of Mendel's work. He proposed inheritance of acquired characteristics, contradicting Mendel's principle of independent assortment. Emphasis on environment. Lysenko believed the environment directly influenced traits, even across generations, unlike genetics focusing on internal factors like genes. Vernalization. Exposing seeds to cold to improve germination and yield was presented as a revolutionary practice, though its effects were overstated and misinterpreted. Vegetative hybridization. Grafting different plants was claimed to permanently combine their characteristics, defying established understanding of plant reproduction. Stage theory of development. Lysenko proposed plants progressed through distinct stages, each influenced by environmental factors, leading to permanent changes. Dominance of practice over theory. Lysenko prioritized field observations and empirical results, even if contradictory to established theory, leading to biased interpretations. Denial of mutation. Lysenko rejected the existence of mutations, essential for genetic variation and adaptation, hindering understanding of plant evolution. Politicization of science. Lysenkoism intertwined scientific claims with political ideology, prioritizing practical results aligned with Soviet agricultural goals over objective scientific evidence. The impact of Lysenkoism on Soviet science and agriculture was as profound as it was devastating. A wave of anti-Mendelian sentiment swept across the Soviet Union, fueled by the widespread adoption of Lysenko's theories. This forceful endorsement led to a severe decline in scientific rigor, as Lysenkoism was propelled not by empirical evidence, but by political convenience. The persecution of geneticists who dared to oppose Lysenko's theories was ruthless, casting a chilling pall over the scientific community. This era, marked by fear and suppression, was a stark departure from the principles of open inquiry and evidence-based science. Lysenko's agricultural practices, when applied, proved catastrophic. His rejection of genetic inheritance led to misguided agricultural policies, triggering devastating famines that engulfed the nation. Millions starved as harvests failed, a grim testament to the dangers of allowing ideology to overrule science. Lysenkoism, for all its ideological appeal, led to a scientific dark age in the Soviet Union and caused untold suffering. The legacy of Lysenkoism serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of ideological interference in science. The downfall of this pseudo-scientific doctrine coincided with the thawing of the Soviet Union and a welcome return to the principles of orthodox genetics. Yet the long-term effects of Lysenkoism were far-reaching, casting a long shadow over the Soviet Union and the global scientific community. Under Lysenko's reign, countless promising research projects were abandoned, and generations of scientists were left disillusioned. The Soviet Union's agricultural sector suffered too, leading to widespread famine and economic instability. From this muddled chapter of history, we glean important lessons about the sanctity of scientific integrity. It underscores the perilous consequences when ideology is allowed to dictate the course of scientific research. Not only does it stifle innovation and progress, but it also betrays public trust. There are some contemporary trends that share similarities in the way they might undermine scientific integrity or objectivity. Here are a few examples to be considered with nuance. Politicization of science. Instances where political agendas influence scientific research or interpretation of results potentially suppressing dissenting voices or prioritizing desired outcomes over objective evidence. This can happen in various fields from environmental policy to public health. Selective reporting of data, focusing on or amplifying specific data points that support a particular narrative while downplaying or ignoring contradictory evidence. This can be seen in certain media outlets or advocacy groups with vested interests. Dismissal of established scientific consensus. When individuals or groups reject well-supported scientific conclusions based on personal opinions, ideologies or alternative interpretations, often without strong evidence backing them up. 
This can be seen in areas like climate change denial or vaccine hesitancy. Emphasis on anecdotal evidence, overvaluing individual stories or personal experiences over comprehensive and rigorous scientific data when making claims or drawing conclusions. This can be misleading and hinder sound decision-making. Attacking scientists and institutions, discrediting or silencing scientists with opposing views, using personal attacks or questioning their credibility without proper justification. This can create a climate of fear and self-censorship, hindering open scientific debate. It's crucial to remember that these are just potential parallels, and each situation needs careful evaluation based on its specific context. Not every instance of disagreement with scientific consensus or emphasis on practical applications constitutes a modern Lysenkoism. However, recognizing these possible areas of concern can help promote critical thinking and encourage a healthy skepticism towards information presented as science. Lysenkoism, a chilling chapter in scientific history, stands as a potent warning against the perils of politicizing science. Don't forget to like and subscribe, or the Lysenko ghost might steal your winter wheat memories. You walk down the grocery aisle, casually tossing items into your basket. Milk? Check? Cereal? Yes. That frozen pizza you love? Wait, hold on, did you know almost 90% of processed foods like this contain genetically modified ingredients? It's true. From your morning toast to your evening snack, GMOs are woven into the fabric of our modern diet. But, are they the villain in a sci-fi movie or a silent hero boosting our food supply? Buckle up, because this isn't a black and white story. We're about to dive into the complex world of GMOs, exploring their potential to fight hunger, their possible risks, and the heated debate swirling around them. So grab a bite, GMO or not, get comfortable, and let's untangle the truth together. Imagine a world where crops resist pests, are fortified with essential nutrients, and can withstand harsh weather conditions. This is not a figment of some science fiction author's imagination, but a real possibility brought to us by the marvel of genetically modified or GMO crops. Harnessing the power of biotechnology, scientists employ transgenic technology and gene splicing to create these wonder crops. By inserting or modifying genes, plants can be endowed with characteristics they wouldn't naturally possess. Think of it as giving them superpowers. These superpowers have the potential to revolutionize agriculture. Increased crop yield is an obvious advantage, but there's more. Imagine reducing the use of pesticides, a major environmental concern, or enhancing the nutritional content of crops, potentially combating nutrient deficiencies in populations around the world. Thus, GMO crops hold the promise of a future where hunger and malnutrition could become relics of the past. However, like Pandora's box, GMO technology comes with its own set of potential risks. One of the significant concerns revolves around the possibility of creating superweeds. These are weeds that can inherit the traits of GMO crops, such as resistance to herbicides through a process known as gene flow or outcrossing. This phenomenon can lead to an increase in the use of chemicals, potentially exacerbating environmental pollution. Additionally, the introduction of genetically modified organisms can disrupt ecosystems by altering the balance of organisms. This is due to the potential for these organisms to outcompete their natural counterparts, leading to a reduction in biodiversity. A related concern is that of genetic contamination, where the genes from GMOs cross into natural organisms, posing long-term risks to the natural gene pool. Another potential risk is the possibility of GMOs causing allergic reactions. Genetic modification often involves the introduction of genes from one species into another. If the transferred gene produces a protein that triggers an allergic response in some individuals, it could result in unexpected allergic reactions. Moreover, GMO technology also raises several ethical concerns. For instance, the monopolization of seeds by large corporations can lead to a loss of control for farmers over their own crops. This could exacerbate economic disparities and threaten food sovereignty, particularly in developing countries. Furthermore, the manipulation of nature through genetic modification opens up a Pandora's box of potential unforeseen consequences. While we may understand the immediate effects of introducing a particular gene, we are still grappling with the complexity of genetic interactions and the long-term implications of these modifications. The potential for unintended effects is, 
an inherent risk in any technology that manipulates complex systems, and GMOs are no exception. Thus, while the benefits of GMOs are alluring, their potential risks necessitate a cautious approach. As we continue to explore this frontier of science, it is crucial that we do so with a deep understanding and respect for the complexity and interconnectedness of nature. Let's delve a little deeper and explore some common GMO food crops and weigh their impact. Herbicide-tolerant soybeans Increase farmer profits due to reduced weed control costs and potential yield benefits. However, concerns remain about increased reliance on specific herbicides and potential development of resistant weeds. There is no doubt an improvement in livelihood for farmers, especially in developing countries, but debates about corporate control of seeds and potential impact on small farmers remain. Insect-resistant corn, BT corn, reduces pesticide use, leading to cost savings and potential environmental benefits. However, there are concerns about the development of resistant insects and potential non-target effects on beneficial insects. Again, there is an increase in food production and potentially lower food prices. However, debates about potential harm to biodiversity and farmer dependence on specific technologies are concerns. Golden rice was developed to address vitamin A deficiency in developing countries, with potential economic benefits through improved health and productivity. It also aims to improve public health, particularly for children. However, debates about limited effectiveness, unintended consequences, and potential commercialization concerns have arisen. Non-browning apples, Arctic apple. Increased profits for growers and retailers due to reduced food waste, but concerns about consumer acceptance and potential impact on traditional apple varieties have come up. GMO canola. Increased oil production and improved processing characteristics. However, concerns about increased herbicide use and potential negative impacts on bee populations are concerning. While there are potential benefits for the biofuel industry and food production, there are also debates about environmental sustainability and potential harm to non-target organisms. These are just a few examples and the impacts of GMO crops are complex and vary depending on specific contexts and perspectives. Here are some exciting areas of recent progress in the GMO field. CRISPR-Cas9 technology. This revolutionary tool allows for incredibly precise editing of genes. Researchers are using it to develop crops with improved drought tolerance, enhanced nutritional value, and resistance to specific diseases. Base editing. This new approach allows for modifying single nucleotides within genes without introducing foreign DNA. This holds potential for creating beneficial changes with potentially fewer regulatory hurdles. Golden Rice 2. This improved version of golden rice addresses earlier critiques by incorporating multiple genes to increase beta-carotene content while maintaining desirable agronomic traits. Biofortified cassava. Scientists are using gene editing to develop cassava varieties with higher zinc and iron content, addressing critical micronutrient deficiencies in developing countries. Drought-tolerant crops. Researchers are using gene editing to introduce genes from other plants or modify existing genes to improve drought tolerance in crops like maize and wheat. RNA interference RNAi. This technology can be used to silence genes, essential for pest or pathogen survival, offering a more targeted and potentially safer approach to pest control. Gene editing for disease resistance. Researchers are using gene editing to introduce genes that confer resistance to specific diseases, reducing reliance on chemical pesticides. This list is just a glimpse into the exciting world of GMO research. These developments hold immense potential for improving food security, nutrition, and sustainability in the face of global challenges. Here are some lesser-known facts about GMOs. GMOs aren't new. Humans have been modifying organisms for centuries through selective breeding and grafting. GMOs simply use more precise techniques. GMOs aren't just food. GMOs are used in many products beyond food like medicines, industrial enzymes, and even biofuels. There are non-GMO GMOs. Some crops undergo mutations naturally or through traditional breeding methods that result in genetic changes, but they're not labeled GMO because they weren't created in a lab. GMOs can help preserve biodiversity. Genetic modification can be used to introduce disease resistance to endangered species, protecting them from threats like invasive pests. GMOs can fight climate change. Some GMO crops are engineered to be more drought resistant or require less water, which can help reduce agriculture's impact on water resources. 
Animals can eat GMOs too. Many animal feed ingredients like soy and corn are already GMO-derived, and studies haven't found any negative effects on animal health or safety. GMO research is heavily regulated. There are strict regulations governing the development, testing, and approval of GMOs, ensuring their safety and environmental impact are thoroughly assessed. Not all GMOs are the same. Different GMOs have different modifications and purposes, so generalizations about their risks or benefits should be avoided. GMO research can benefit organic farming. GMO techniques can be used to develop disease-resistant organic crops, reducing reliance on pesticides and improving organic yields. The future of GMOs holds immense potential beyond the advantages we see today. Imagine crops engineered to synthesize essential vitamins not currently found in them, combating malnutrition on a global scale. Picture plants with built-in resistance to a spectrum of emerging diseases, ensuring food security in the face of changing climates and pathogens. We might even see crops designed to capture excess atmospheric carbon, contributing to environmental solutions. Advanced gene editing could allow for designer crops customized to specific nutritional needs or growing conditions, optimizing both yield and health benefits. Furthermore, GMOs could revolutionize biomanufacturing, producing novel materials, medicines, and fuels in a sustainable manner. While ethical considerations and rigorous testing remain paramount, the future of GMOs holds the potential to transform agriculture, healthcare, and even our approach to environmental challenges, creating a more secure and sustainable world for generations to come. The question, then, is not whether GMOs are good or bad, but how we can balance the potential benefits and risks. As we navigate the labyrinth of genetically modified organisms, it becomes evident that the key to this puzzle lies in striking a balance, a delicate harmony between the bountiful benefits and potential perils. This equilibrium hinges on rigorous testing and regulation of GMOs to ensure their safety. The stage for this testing is not confined to the sterile white walls of a laboratory. It extends to the verdant expanses of our farms, the hushed corridors of government bodies, and the bustling hubbub of public forums. Each of these arenas plays a pivotal role in this intricate dance of risk and reward. Biosafety, a term that encapsulates the safe handling, use, and transfer of GMOs, is the linchpin of this process. It sets the standards that guide the development and application of GMOs, ensuring that their potential does not morph into a Pandora's box of unforeseen complications. Risk assessment, a meticulous process of evaluating the potential hazards and determining the magnitude of their impact, is another crucial cog in this machinery. It puts the pros and cons of GMOs on a scientific scale, measuring with precision the weight of each. Public consultation, the voice of the people, is the compass that guides this journey. It brings to the table diverse perspectives, ensuring that the path we tread is not just scientifically sound, but also socially acceptable. Transparency in this context is not just a virtue, but a necessity. It is the bridge that connects the world of science with the public sphere, fostering understanding and trust. Public education then becomes an essential tool in demystifying GMO technology, dispelling fears and sparking informed discourse. With these elements in place, we can navigate the enigma of GMOs, not with trepidation, but with confidence and curiosity. We can embrace the potential of this technology while keeping a vigilant eye on possible risks. With a balanced approach, we can harness the power of GMOs for the greater good while minimizing potential risks. So are GMOs friend or foe? Share your thoughts in the comments and let's keep the conversation bubbling and don't forget to subscribe for more science adventures. What if you could create an exact genetic replica of yourself? Welcome to the world of human cloning. This isn't a realm of science fiction, but a tangible reality, thanks to breakthroughs in genetic engineering and biotechnology. Human cloning, the creation of a genetically identical copy of a human, represents a leap forward in our understanding of life itself. It's a tantalizing prospect fraught with possibilities and perils alike. Let's dive into the complexities and implications of this fascinating scientific frontier. Imagine a world where organ failure could be a thing of the past. A world where the waiting lists for organ transplants are no more, where the anguish of patients and their families is alleviated. This is not the stuff of science fiction but a potential reality offered by human cloning. 
The concept of organ farming might sound like a dystopian novel plot, yet it's one of the most compelling arguments for human cloning. By creating a genetic duplicate, we can grow perfectly matched organs that the body won't reject. No longer would we need to rely on the selfless acts of organ donors or the grim lottery of waiting for a compatible organ to become available. Instead, we could cultivate the necessary organs tailored to the individual patient's genetics. A kidney for a child suffering from renal failure, a liver for an alcoholic who's turned their life around, or a heart for a young athlete struck down in their prime. The possibilities are truly life-changing. But the potential benefits of human cloning extend beyond organ farming. Genetic disease research could also stand to benefit immensely. Diseases that have a genetic basis, such as cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, or certain cancers, could be studied in a whole new light. Cloning could provide us with a unique and unparalleled opportunity to understand the development and progression of these diseases, allowing us to test new treatments and potentially find cures. In addition, human cloning could also offer a ray of hope for those struggling with infertility. For couples who cannot conceive naturally, cloning could provide a way to have a child that is genetically related to them. This could transform the field of reproductive medicine, offering new avenues for those desperate to start a family. These benefits are not mere speculation, but grounded in scientific potential. They represent a future where human cloning could revolutionize medicine and research, saving lives, curing diseases, and bringing joy to those yearning for a family. However, as tantalizing as these benefits seem, human cloning isn't without its potential risks. Yet, in the shadows of these potential benefits lurk some daunting risks. As we journey into the realm of human cloning, we must tread lightly, for the path is fraught with peril. The ethical quagmire we find ourselves in is deep and complex. Cloning, in essence, involves creating a new individual with a predetermined genetic blueprint. This raises profound questions about individuality, identity, and human dignity. What happens to our sense of self when we can be replicated? What happens to our understanding of life when we can manufacture it? The potential for misuse is another concern that cannot be overlooked. The power to clone could fall into the wrong hands, leading to a dystopian future of mass-produced humans, bred for specific roles or worse, as a source of organs. It's a chilling thought, reminiscent of science fiction, yet a possibility we must consider. Let's also consider the health risks for the clone. The process of cloning is far from perfect. In fact, it's riddled with uncertainty. Clones often suffer from developmental abnormalities and have a shorter lifespan. Dolly the sheep, the first mammal cloned from an adult cell, developed a severe form of arthritis at an unusually young age and died prematurely. We cannot ignore the potential suffering we might inflict on a cloned individual. Moreover, the social impacts of human cloning could be profound and far-reaching. If cloning becomes widespread, it could exacerbate social inequality by creating a genetic underclass or a genetically enhanced elite. It could alter family structures, disrupt traditional relationships and lead to unforeseen societal changes. Finally, there's the risk of a diminished gene pool. Cloning, by its very nature, reduces genetic diversity. And as we've learned from countless species, a lack of genetic diversity can leave a population vulnerable to disease and other threats. The balance between these benefits and risks is where the true debate over human cloning lies. As we continue to push the boundaries of science, we must also ensure that we are guided by our collective sense of humanity, our respect for individual rights, and our commitment to the welfare of all. Here are some lesser known facts about cloning. The first successful cloning wasn't a sheep, it was a frog. In 1952, Robert Briggs and Thomas King successfully cloned a frog tadpole using nuclear transfer, paving the way for future cloning advancements. Plants have been naturally cloning themselves for millennia. Bananas, navel oranges, and even some potato varieties are all technically clones, naturally propagated through asexual reproduction methods like vegetative propagation. There are different types of cloning beyond reproductive cloning. While the debate surrounding human cloning usually focuses on reproductive cloning, creating a whole organism, 
Therapeutic cloning aims to create stem cells for medical purposes, raising different ethical considerations. Scientists are investigating cloning to save endangered species. Researchers are exploring the potential of using cloning techniques to preserve the genetic diversity of endangered animals by creating clones from preserved genetic material. Dolly the sheep wasn't actually the first mammal clone. In 1993, researchers at Texas A&M University successfully cloned a female rhesus monkey named Yvette. Although the news wasn't widely reported until after Dolly's birth in 1996. Cloning can be used to de-extinct species, but with limitations. While cloning may bring back the genetic makeup of an extinct species, it wouldn't necessarily bring back the exact creature due to the lack of its original environment and interactions with other extinct animals. Scientists have successfully cloned glowing fish and even jellyfish. Researchers have combined cloning techniques with the introduction of fluorescent genes, creating unique bioluminescent animals for research purposes. While scientific evidence contradicts the existence of human clones, unsubstantiated rumors and conspiracy theories about them persist online and in popular culture. It's important to remember that these claims lack credible evidence and are often harmful as they spread misinformation. Here are some examples. Celebrity clones. This theory often pops up with claims that certain celebrities have been secretly replaced with clones. Names like Paul McCartney, Beyonce, and Nicolas Cage are frequently mentioned. These claims often rely on superficial comparisons of physical appearance, disregarding age, weight fluctuations, and stylization changes. The sources for these claims are typically unreliable websites or social media posts with no basis in verifiable evidence. Secret societies. Some conspiracy theories connect human cloning to powerful secret societies like the Illuminati. These narratives often involve claims that these societies use clones for various nefarious purposes like controlling the population or maintaining their power. The sources for these claims are typically fictional stories, online forums, and self-proclaimed experts lacking any credible evidence or affiliation with recognized scientific or investigative bodies government cloning programs. This widespread theory alleges that governments are secretly running clandestine cloning programs for diverse purposes, ranging from creating super soldiers to preserving the lives of the elite. These claims often rely on cherry-picking information from legitimate scientific research, often misinterpreting or misrepresenting the findings to fit the narrative. Once again, the sources for these claims are generally unreliable websites anonymous online sources, and individuals lacking expertise or access to verifiable evidence. It's crucial to remember that these are just a few examples, and the specifics of these rumors can vary greatly. It's essential to be critical of information encountered online, especially when it seems outlandish or sensational. Always seek reputable sources like academic journals, established news outlets, and recognized scientific institutions to verify information before accepting it as fact. Here are seven science fiction books that explore cloning. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This haunting novel tells the story of Kathy H., a young woman raised in a seemingly idyllic boarding school, who gradually comes to understand the horrifying truth about her existence and the purpose for which she was created. Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. Set in a dystopian future ravaged by a genetically engineered pandemic, this novel follows Snowman, a lone survivor who struggles to rebuild his life and piece together the events that led to the world's downfall. The Island by Aldous Huxley. This classic dystopian novel explores themes of social control and scientific advancement in a world where human reproduction is strictly controlled and individuals are genetically engineered for specific roles in society. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, narrated by Death. This novel tells the story of Liesel Memminger, a young German girl during World War II who is fostered by a kind-hearted couple and learns to love books and storytelling. The novel also explores the theme of identity and the consequences of Nazi ideology, including human experimentation. I am the messenger by Marcus Zusak. 
This novel follows the story of Ed Kennedy, a young man who experiences a series of seemingly random events that lead him on a quest to discover his purpose in life. The novel also explores themes of fate, free will, and the power of storytelling. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood Set in a dystopian future where environmental disasters and social unrest have led to a totalitarian regime that controls the reproduction of its elite class, this novel follows Offred, a woman forced to serve as a handmaid, one of the few fertile women left. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell This complex and ambitious novel spans multiple genres and timelines, telling the story of six interconnected characters whose lives are shaped by the theme of reincarnation. The novel also explores themes of love, loss, and the interconnectedness of humanity. So we find ourselves at the crossroads of human ingenuity and ethical considerations. On one hand, we have the tantalizing prospect of breakthroughs in medical science, the potential to treat or even eradicate genetic diseases. On the flip side, we grapple with the moral implications, the fear of creating a divide between clones and naturally born humans, not to mention the potential for misuse. Human cloning, a scientific marvel or an ethical minefield, the debate continues. So, should we clone humans? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to SciSips to stay up to date on the latest science discussions.